Well, the breaking news of the night is that Donald Trump's name appears in another indictment. This one in Arizona, the attorney general of Arizona, has charged 11 Republican fake electors and seven Trump associates, including Mark Meadows and Rudolph Giuliani, with a criminal conspiracy involving several felonies. The indictment says it was, quote, a scheme or artifice to defraud by preventing the lawful transfer of the presidency of the United States, keeping President Donald J. Trump in office against the will of Arizona voters and depriving Arizona voters of their right to vote and have their votes counted under the United States Constitution, Arizona Constitution, Article 7. Donald Trump also appears later in the indictment in the detailed description of the crimes as unindicted co-conspirator one. Quote, defendants' attempts to declare unindicted co-conspirator one and Pence the winners of the 2020 presidential election contrary to voter intent and the law involved numerous other charged and uncharged co-conspirators. The names of all of the defendants who are residents of Arizona were revealed publicly in the indictment, but the names of seven other out-of-state defendants are still redacted since they have not yet been served with the indictment or weren't yet served with the indictment when it was released. Mark Meadows' name is redacted in the indictment, but it could not be more obvious in this line that begins with a redaction and says redaction was unindicted co-conspirator one's chief of staff in 2020. Mystery solved. The other Trump associates easily identifiable from the description of their actions in the indictment are attorneys John Eastman and Jenna Ellis, Trump aide Boris Epstein, Christina Bob, and Trump campaign operative Mike Roman. The indictment says defendants and unindicted co-conspirators schemed to prevent the lawful transfer of the presidency to keep unindicted co-conspirator one in office against the will of Arizona's voters. This scheme would have deprived Arizona voters of their right to vote and have their votes counted. Republican presidential elector defendants then voted for President Donald Trump and Vice President Michael Pence on December 14th, 2020, falsely claiming to be the duly elected and qualified electors for president and vice president from of the United States from the state of Arizona. Defendants deceived the citizens of Arizona by falsely claiming that those votes were contingent only on a legal challenge that would change the outcome of the election. In reality, defendants intended that their false votes for Trump Pence would encourage Pence to reject the Biden-Harris votes on January 6, 2021, regardless of the outcome of the legal challenge. The scheme failed when Vice President Michael Pence accepted all certified Biden-Harris votes on January 6, 2021. The indicted fake electors include Kelly Ward, who was the chair of the Arizona Republican Party, who was indicted along with her husband, Michael Ward, as a fake elector. Two Republican members of the state legislature have been indicted as fake electors, Jacob Hoffman and Anthony Kern. For anyone who still needs a lesson in how much your vote matters, the Democratic Attorney General of the state of Arizona won her election by 280 votes. 280 votes out of two and a half million votes cast. So if a couple hundred people didn't get to vote that day or voted differently in that election, we would not be reading these indictments tonight. Tonight, Arizona's Attorney General, Chris Mays, announced the indictments. Hi, I'm Arizona Attorney General Chris Mays. Let me start by thanking everyone for your patience as we conducted a thorough and professional investigation over the past 13 months into the fake elector scheme in our state. I understand for some of you today didn't come fast enough, and I know I'll be criticized by others for conducting this investigation at all. But as I have stated before and will say here again today, I will not allow American democracy to be undermined. We're here because justice demands an answer to the efforts that the defendants and other unindicted co-conspirators allegedly took to undermine the will of Arizona's voters during the 2020 presidential election. Arizona's election was free and fair. 
the people of Arizona elected President Biden. Unwilling to accept this fact, the defendants charged by the state grand jury allegedly schemed to prevent the lawful transfer of the presidency. The defendants and other unindicted co-conspirators raised false claims of widespread voter fraud in Arizona to pressure elections officials to change the outcome of a transparent, free, and fair democratic election. Those efforts ultimately failed when officials stood firm followed their statutory duties, and officially certified Arizona's election on November 30th, 2020. These defendants deceived the citizens of Arizona by falsely claiming that those votes were contingent only on a legal challenge that would change the outcome of the election. In reality, the defendants intended that the false votes for Trump and Pence would encourage Vice President Pence to reject the certified Biden-Harris electors' votes, regardless of the result of any legal challenge. As you will recall, none of the legal challenges filed in Arizona state and federal courts regarding the 2020 election were remotely successful at any stage of the case. That scheme failed when Vice President Pence upheld the rule of law and accepted all certified Biden-Harris votes on January 6, 2021. A state grand jury made up of everyday, regular Arizonans has now handed down felony indictments for all 11 Republican electors, as well as several others connected to this scheme. These charges include fraud, forgery, and conspiracy. These charges are class two, four, and five felonies. These are serious indictments. Our office will continue its investigation into the efforts to illegally subvert the results of the 2020 presidential election. Andrew, uh, now that you've had a little time uh, with this indictment, uh, I just want to put up on the screen for the audience as we discuss it, the list of the charges, the six different crimes uh, that include forgery, tampering with a public record. Uh, what do you make of, of what you're reading here? A couple things. One, it is very similar to what we have seen in other states where there have been charges in Georgia and Michigan, um, where this was a top down scheme. And what I mean by that is that Tim and his colleagues put together a vast amount of proof. It was then uh, added onto by Jack Smith, which showed that this scheme of a fake elector scheme was happening from the campaign down to the states. This was not something that was bubbling up at a grassroots level. And that's why you're seeing fake electors at the Arizona level and people at the campaign level and into the White House. That's the second point. Um, I was struck by, on page 44 of this uh, indictment, uh, Eric Hirschman seems to be quite, who was a White House counsel, seems once again to be very much an important witness in the case. And he is on a text message where basically he and a colleague are talking about how they're not going to sign off on this because he, he views this as, and this is a quote in the indictment, certifying illegal votes. Certifying illegal votes is what he wrote. And he said, someone else is going to have to sign it. And he says, Rudy, Boris, and Jenna. And those names are actually the three of the people who are charged um, or appear to be charged. So those are my, my quick takes of the charges here. Uh, Tim, uh, did you learn anything in, in this indictment that you hadn't already uh, had a pretty clear sense of in the January 6th investigation? Yeah, Lawrence, a, a few details, but not the big picture. The, the big picture has been clear for a while. And as, as Andrew just said, this was a top-down, intentional part of the plan, the generation of these fake electors, which then becomes essentially a predicate for Vice President Pence or for the Supreme Court or, or some entity to do something to prevent the transfer of power. So there's some color, there's some details that uh, of which we were not aware. We did not talk to as many people about Arizona specifically as the attorney general has done, but it doesn't change this sort of core narrative 
that the fake electors were an indispensable means to perpetuate this multi-part plan to try to prevent uh, the certification and the transfer of power. Uh, Andrew Weissman, uh, Kenneth Cheeseborough doesn't appear in this indictment. He, of course, uh, was indicted in Georgia and has already pleaded guilty in Georgia. And there were reports indicating that he had actually traveled to Arizona uh, to cooperate with this investigation. You know, that seems to be the main reason why he would not be charged here is that he is actually cooperating or maybe I should say at least cooperating enough to not be charged. Um, you know, it, it's still, I think, the jury's out about just how candid um, he has been. But it's it's otherwise hard to explain why his name does not appear. And presumably, it's because he has counsel who has said, look, if you do not want to be on, as Tim and I used to say in our prior jobs, on the other side of a V, meaning, you know, United States versus, or in this case, Arizona versus, um, you need to start you know, finding religion and, you know, join Team America. Um, so it's possible that that is the main reason that you don't see his name here, because otherwise, as Tim knows very well from, you know, having investigated this deeply, you know, he was in the thick of things. And, you know, we know that actually also from his own plea in Georgia. So this meeting of the fake electors was publicized at the time. I think we actually have video of it where they allowed uh, it to be covered, actually, as though it was uh, some kind of real event with some uh, import to it. Um, we can, we'll show that video in the control room as soon as we can put it. There it is. So, that, so that's the actual meeting right there that we're putting on the screen. That, that, those are the indicted fake electors uh, sitting there. And they... The, the attorney general in the indictment stresses that they were lying about the purposes of that meeting at the time they were saying that we will only use these electors in the event that Donald Trump somehow wins one of his legal cases in court that could then allow these electors to be used. And the attorney general's indictment says uh, absolutely not. They always planned to try to use these electors on January 6th, no matter what happened in court. Uh, and Tim, there's a last line that appears uh, in, in, w at, at the end of the charge against every elector, beginning with Kelly Ward. And the last line says, she did not withdraw her vote even though no legal challenge successfully changed the outcome of Arizona's 2020 presidential election. That same line appears at the end of the description of every other elector and what they did. And it seems in reading it uh, that this attorney general uh, would not be bringing this prosecution if they actually did what they publicly claimed they were going to do, which is withdraw these electors uh, once yeah. the election was certified for Joe Biden. Yeah, Lawrence, exactly right. Look, there was one fake elector to whom we spoke in Georgia who analogized the fake elector certificates in that state to Super Bowl T-shirts. He said, look, before the Super Bowl, you print T-shirts that say both teams won so that whoever actually wins, there are T-shirts already printed that show that they're the champions. The other ones just get tossed because the outcome doesn't turn out consistent with the T-shirt. And there were fake electors in Georgia and other states who believed that this was essentially the same, a contingency. But the language that you just cited shows that the Arizona electors knew that really isn't tied to the success of any case because the cases had been filed, the cases had been largely disposed of, had not prevailed. And even after they weren't withdrawn when all the cases in Arizona are rejected for lack of evidence. So the theory here is that there was never any serious contingency. These were meant to be an apparatus for Mike Pence to choose for political motivation the Trump electors because of these vague suspicions of voter fraud absent any evidence. That's what makes it criminal, right? Not a good faith, hey, just in case election, the, the, the litigation goes one way, we need this backup plan. The lack of withdrawal, as that language reflects, shows that this was always meant to apply and be sent and be considered by Congress, regardless of the election of the litigation.
Uh, Andrew, a big difference between uh, the Georgia indictment and this indictment. Donald Trump doesn't make it into the indicted column uh, in this indictment. Donald Trump, as we recall, made his debut in criminal indictments as individual one in New York in the federal indictment of Michael Cohen in the Stormy Daniels payoff case. Uh, and now tonight in Arizona, he is a co-conspirator one. Uh, what is the difference in the evidence between uh, Georgia and Arizona? Obviously, we don't have a tape recorded uh, telephone call with the secretary of state of Arizona. Yeah, I mean, you know, that that obviously is a huge piece of evidence that Georgia has. It's not clear yet why we have alter egos being charged in Arizona, but not the ego, <laughs> They're the main principal person for whom this is done. Uh, the fake electors didn't do this on their own. Uh, people like Rudy Giuliani, all of the sort of amanuensises, the, the lawyers, they're all staff to somebody who is the president. Um, but it's unclear, you know, what the lack of proof is. But, you know, for sure it is because they somehow don't have enough direct evidence yet against him. But it's, it's important to note that I stress the word yet. These are state charges, which means regardless of who wins the presidential election, whether it's Biden or Trump, it doesn't matter because the, you cannot have a federal pardon of these cases. So these people are going to be going to trial in Arizona uh, on these charges. And just to be clear what Tim is saying, so people understand that this is no joke, this is, these charges, if proved, really show this is what you see in, like, you know, petty banana republics. This is this is fundamentally undermining what it means to be a democracy. They're absolutely undermining the votes in these states where the idea is whoever won, that doesn't matter. The democracy is not going to apply. I mean, this could not be a greater threat to this country over its entire history.